Now this is the word you know. Creation ex nihilo. Ibda means creating without any matter. And khalq means to create something from something. Khalq and ibda. Or ijad or takween. Three words. Ibda, ijad, takween. They mean the same. Khalq. Ijad, ibda and takween means to create something out of nothing. This is bid'ah, ibda'ah. That is why we call bid'ah. That you have, you know, innovated something in, in religion which has no basis, no roots. You should have some, you, whatever you want to do, there must be some root, there must be some basis, some source in Quran or in Hadith, Sunnah, or in the practice of the companions of the Prophet. But if you are, you know, inventing some other ceremony, some other ritual, which has no roots, so it is bid'ah. In this same way, ibda was creation ex nihilo. Badiru samawati wal He is the originator of the heavens and the earth. Anna yakunu lahu waladun. How can there be a son or a daughter for him? Walam takun lahu sahiba. When there has been no wife for him. Either you believe in a wife also. But at least the pagan Arabs didn't believe in any wife. But as I told you, the Egyptians, the Egyptian trinity included, they didn't call him the wife of God, but the mother God, God mother. God as father, Horus as the son of God, Isis as the God mother. And actually the Christians, you know, in the later days, not in the very beginning after, after Jesus alayhi salatu was salam, but later on, they also imitated, invented this trinity. And the trinity originally was God as father, Jesus as son of God, and Mary as God mother. That was the trinity. Just we, we have an example, you know, in the case of Ismailis. When they came over to India and they wanted to preach, you know, their own brand of Islam to the local Hindus here. They found that they believe in nine incarnations of God. This was an incarnation of God, Rama was an incarnation of God, and Krishna was an incarnation of God. So there are nine. They added Hazrat Ali as the tenth. Dasham Avatar. He is the tenth incarnation of God. So it became very close to their minds. It becomes very easily acceptable to them. Dasham Avatar. You believe in nine authors, you believe in nine, you know, gods incarnate, so why not believe in one more? The same thing that the Christians did to spread their dogma, they imitated the dogma that was already existing in Egypt. So that was the trinity to begin with. He has created everything. Everything except him is the creation. He is the creator. That's all. And it is not that after creating everything he is unaware of it. No, he knows everything. As we read, that even if a leaf is dropping from the tree, it is in his knowledge. And the darknesses of the land, earth, or in the sea or ocean, everything is in his knowledge. Now this is introducing Allah. This is, you know, Tawheed. Who is Allah? What are his attributes? As we say, Amantu billahi kama hua bi asmaihi wa sifati. Believe in Allah is nothing. Unless you believe in all his attributes. You know, believe in God. Everybody has the belief in God. But what are the attributes of Allah whom we, in, whom, in whom we believe? So the attributes of Allah. So these attributes of Allah, they are being explained one by one. Such is Allah your Lord. La ilaha illahu. There is no God except him. He is the creator of all the things. So what is the logical result? You must worship him. You must obey him totally. You must love him 
from the depths of your heart. All these three things go to make ibadah. Some mode of worship to show your reverence and respect. Then love. You must love him more than anything else. And then total obedience. Three things joined go to make ibadah. فَعْبُدُوهُ وَهُوْ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْنِ وَكِيلٌ And he is the guardian and responsible for everything. لَا تُدْرِكُهُ الْأَبْسَارِ Sights cannot comprehend him. Our eyes, our sight cannot comprehend him. He is invisible. Our sight cannot comprehend him. لَا تُدْرِكُهُ الْأَبْسَارِ وَهُوَا يُدْرِكُهُ الْأَبْسَارِ He comprehends the sights. He is seeing you. But you can't see him. وَهُوَا لَطِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ And he is the subtle one. لَطِيف You cannot comprehend him. He is beyond that comprehension. But on the other side, he is khabir, he is aware of everything. He is aware of everything, but you can't know him in his person. You can't see him. You can know him only through the attributes. That's all. آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ كَمَا هُوَ بِأَسْمَاءِ وَسِفَاتِهِ What is his person? How is he like? What is his form? You can't see it. It is beyond your perception and beyond your conception even. قَدْ جَاكُمْ بَسَائِرُ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ O mankind, the enlightenments have already reached you from your Lord. This is enlightenment. This is how He is introducing you to Allah. He is telling you His attributes. بَسَائِرُ Enlightenment has come to you from your Rabb, from your Lord. فَمَا أَبْسَرَ فَلِي نَفْسِي So whosoever sees, so he sees for himself. وَمَنْ عَمِيَةً and whosoever closes his eyes, becomes blind, doesn't want to see, فَعَلَيْهَا So it is going to harm him and none else. وَمَا أَنَا عَلَيْكُمْ بِحَفِيظ And I am not a guard over you or a watch upon you. And in this way we are rotating our revelations. We are changing our modes of expression. We are, we are telling you things the same things in various ways. وَلَيَقُولُوا So that these unbelievers say, you have learned. No doubt you are a learned person. وَلَنُبَيِّنَهُ لِقَوْمِ يَعْلَمُونَ Even if they don't accept, they will accept that you have learned and you are a knowledgeable person. وَلَنُبَيِّنَهُ لِقَوْمِ يَعْلَمُونَ And so that we make it clear for those people who have the knowledge or who want to have the knowledge.